Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Chart. It's Kate here, back with another month of the kissing class. And this month, we're looking at something a little bit different. A lot of us these days are environmentally conscious. It's a good way to be. But how often do you think about recycling in your art projects? So today we're going to make a traveler's notebook or an A5 journal from recycled materials. Now, if you're a professional book binder, turn away now. I'm about to do several things that are really, really wrong in professional book binding, but will make life really easy for a custom recycled traveler's notebook. Now, what am I going to use for this? You might be surprised. See this gorgeous piece of paper? It's not a piece of paper. It's actually a box. So if you've got pretty boxes from packaging, just cut the top and the bottom flaps off, flatten them out, and you have an amazing cover. So I have a whole lot of random scrapbook pages, sets that you've used part of, but not all of. So I like to keep them. So I have a random selection of papers here. Now, other things you could add are book pages. If you have a large material collection, don't forget about the material. You can use that as well. Now this little uh, sheet of squares is not big enough at all. But if you have larger pieces of material, consider using that in there as well. Don't think all of your pages need to be the same size. I'm going to use some of these and insert them horizontally to make little flaps in my book. You can add backgrounds on cardstock that you've previously created and haven't done anything with. More papers that I kind of was playing with colors on. But for a journal, if you've got handwriting over there, so cute. Transparent pieces of cardstock or paper, kind of fun. Cards, yep, I keep some of my cards. Now, of course, you can add normal paper in there as well. A little bit of watercolor cardstock. That way you've got a few different surfaces to create on. Leftover cardstock, leftover playbills or um, music sheets, catalogs, advertising catalogs. You could easily paint over that and then work that image into part of your journal. Shipping tags, you can get some really big ones these days. These are great. And of course, my personal favorite, the calendar. I'm going to cut them to one of two sizes so that it will either fit in my traveler's notebook or my A5 journal and then we'll get started. Once the papers are all cut to size, you need to fold each of them. Now, folding the pages with a scoring board or a bone folder is a big no-no in book binding, but because of the thickness of some of our pages, we're going to have to do this to be able to create our junk journal. Once all of the pages are scored, use your bone folder and just make sure that they're nice and flat. Repeat that process with each page. So once you've got all of your pages bent, the next steps are purely practical. Number one, you can't put too many pages in the one booklet or else it becomes too fat and unwieldy. Now you can also see the pages as you get towards the center are poking out further. So we will need to trim this but we have to do that when we're finished. So at this point you need to decide on your cover so I've got a piece of cardstock for that. And then you need to decide on the order of your pages. So what I like to try and do is put pages facing each other with similar colors. So this one's all white. This one would probably look better with a little of that. To sort of see how your papers match up. Now there's nothing wrong with a white and a, and a, a color, but sometimes it's nicer to perhaps have, for example, those two together. So you've got a bit of interest. Or I might like these two together as well. So just layer them so that the colors look nice against each other together. Now don't forget some of these are double-sided papers as well. 
So you may have more than one option here. Now the next step is to make ourselves a little guide. So I have a piece of thick cardstock here. Now I've made this the exact same length as the notebook. And just draw a quick line down the middle here. So I'm going to come in two and a half centimeters from each end. And I'm going to draw five points in total. Each point will be evenly spaced and each of these will be a hole. So I'll end up with five evenly spaced holes drawn onto my piece of cardboard. Now to punch the holes into the cardstock and into the subsequent book pages, you'll need a sharp, strong implement. So either a heavy duty needle and really tough hands, a book binding awl, or I'm using a stamping pick, it's a die pick. Now with the die pick, I'll have to work a little bit harder to get through the materials and push and sort of wiggle to make a hole the right size, but it will work just fine. Now I'm also going to snip a couple of little windows in the end of this, just so I can see where I'm placing it on the paper and make sure it's in the perfect spot. So this is going to let me place this on the exact center of my piece of cardstock. So I can line up the center that I've previously folded with the line I've got down the middle here on both ends and then just punch through those holes. That puts holes in the paper. Now doing this for every single sheet of paper means that my holes will be in exactly the same space on each piece of paper. Now on the pieces of paper that are different sizes to the rest, you need to determine where you would like this piece of paper in your book. So I'm going to go for the middle. So I'm just going to line it up here. And there we go, the marks are in the center of the cardstock. Now don't throw this away because you can use it for any future book that you might make. Now before you do anything else, <laughs> this is very important. Go back through and make sure that you don't have any of your pages out of place. Now, you will need some tapestry needles and this is waxed book binding thread. You can use that or if you don't have it, you can also use hemp thread, uh, twine, anything that you have a needle fat enough to accommodate. So I'm going to use the book binding thread just because that's what I have. And you'll need to decide how many rows of stitching you would like to add to your journal. I've decided to add two rows of stitching, so I'll need to make my thread five times the length of my journal to accommodate that. I'm going to start by tying a double knot in the end of my thread. Now you wouldn't do this for proper book binding, but for us it'll be a lot easier. Now I'm going to start from the top of my book and thread that needle through the first hole. Now this process is a little bit tougher for us than it is when you're using just usual paper because our pages are different sizes, different thicknesses, different widths, different materials. So go carefully for this first layer and I find that it's easiest to just thread the needle through each page separately to begin with just for the first couple of holes. This is also why we need a little knot on the end of our thread because you have to tug quite hard to make sure that it's pulled through. Now it's time to go through the second hole. Now this is a little more difficult because you've got to deal with those pages that are not in place. So the easiest way to do that is just tilt the papers and push the needle through. You can kind of see where the hole is. Now I'm encountering my first odd size page just line up the hole and pop it through. And we're at the back of the book again. Now, at this point, I have the needle poking from one side to the next. Very carefully thread this through. Now you'll notice I've got my thumb over the little knot here to prevent it from pulling the whole way through. Now, if you're very lucky and your pages are all lined up, you can just poke the needle directly through to the other side. All right, we're getting somewhere now. Again, wiggle the needle through. When you get to the middle, it's a really good idea to make sure that your thread is fully pulled through and taut. Just give a little tug on each end and make sure there's no hidden excess in the journal. Those two bits are the most difficult. All you need to do now is pop the needle through the hole 
and with a firm hand push it out the other side. Now those first two holes and two threads made sure all of our pages are perfectly aligned and our binding is nice and taut. Back through this last hole here it takes a bit of wiggling of course if you have any trouble you can just look at where you're going and that is our first stitch done. So at the moment you can see we've got string, no string, string, no string. So the next thing we need to do is go in the other direction. So there's a little piece of string everywhere we go. But before we do that just make sure you give that a little tug here to make sure this is nice and tight. back through that hole. Now because you've already gone through here once that's a whole lot easier the second time. Make sure it's nice and tight. Flip it over. Same process again. And back through this second last hole here. So that gives me two rows of stitching here and here and here. And then what I'm going to do is twist this thread here and go back through itself a few times just to make a bit of a decorative element. Now I've decided to tie the tail that we started with and the tail that we've ended with into a little knot. You could also pull this knot through to the middle so that you can't see it on the outside but I don't mind it at all. Then just trim off the little tails. You could also add charms or beads to this and make it a gorgeous decorative element. Almost finished! So we have all of our pages bound together in an awesome little notebook. Only one last thing to do. So as you can see the notebook has different size pages. This may or may not bother you. If it doesn't bother you you can just leave it like that. For me I know it's going to be annoying so I'm using some bulldog clips to hold it in place and I'm just trimming all of the pages to the same size using a pen blade. Quick, simple, efficient. So now when I close my book the edges sit perfectly flat and unless you're a professional bookbinder it's kind of easier to do that afterwards. Now the last thing I do is I make sure all my pages are sitting the way I want them to and to do that you just open and close them a few times, bend the journal back on itself and then bend it flat and you now have a gorgeous journal and I can now slide this into my traveler's notebook and it is adorably gorgeous and ready to use. If you enjoyed this video I'd love you to give me a like and if you'd like to see more from Sparkle Tart subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a product list below the video in the description and you can connect with me via YouTube Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter or Google+. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!